Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I want to say good morning. This video is going to walk you through the process of how to design up grids that you can cut into your spoil board on your CNC router. Now what I mean by grids is lines that you actually cut into your spoil board, which mine is obviously spoiled as you can see, that gives you some kind of reference where you can place your material. But not only that, know exactly the distance where your start corner is from the home position. First of all, let's talk about the position. These lines are cut by the machine. So this is the cut line that the machine will make as well as that way. So I can place the edge of my material right there and because it's on a line, I know that is straight true to the machine. But I also can place the back corner on the line as well. And now I know that I'm square all the way around. I've got a, a, a dead nuts reference on this machine. Now these, this grid is two inches by two inches. Right now the machine is at the home position. I can set that to zero, zero go into my software, tell the machine to move two, four, six inches and forward two, four, six, eight inches. And it'll come right over this corner right here. And I can set my zero point without having to like eyeball it into place. And then all I have to do is come down and touch my tool down on there and set the Z. So that is what a grid is for. And it'll make your setups on your CNC router much easier than doing all the guesswork. In fact, this program for the Bob's Evolution series, I'll just make available to you on my Etsy store for what? I will just sell it for a buck. $1.20 because the transaction costs 20 cents. So there will be a link down below for that. In fact, I'll even put one for the KL700 series of Bob's. CNC's, I'll create a vector file and I'll make that available on my Etsy store for the same price. Now what I'm going to be showing you here are principles that you can apply to any software that you're using. Personally, I use Vectric VCarve, but this will work in uh, the Aspire version. It'll work on Easel. It'll work on Carbide Create. It's the principles to follow that will make this happen for you. So I'm going to dive into my VCarve software and tell you how to do this. Now I just want to let you know this came from Doug, a guy who has asked me many questions as he's been learning about CNC routers. Doug emailed me, said, Garrett, I've got another problem I'm not sure how to solve. And he had actually watched another video of somebody that walked through this process and asked me to watch the video as well. And I did. The principles were very sound what the gentleman was teaching. I think he gave a little too much information though. It, it felt a little overwhelming to me. So that's probably why Doug was really starting to struggle with it. So I'm going to show you the, the way I do it. I'm going to keep this really simple so that you can do this in one shot really quick. Let's dive into VCarve. Now, one of the things I want you to keep in mind is it doesn't matter how big your machine is. You just want to go with the machine travel distance that they tell you. Typically, CNC machines will have a little bit more distance they can travel over the measurements they give you. It's not really wise to go over that unless you know specifically what it is. So in my case, my machine has a working surface or the area that it can actually make cuts in of 24 inches by 24 inches. Doug's machine has a 48 inches by 48 inches. So yours may be seven inches by 12 inches. It doesn't matter. You just follow the same principle and we're going to start walking through this and you'll understand this in the end. Okay, so I am opening up a new job and since we're in VCarve, we're just going to set it up. I am going to go with the full 24 by 24 right over here. And the depth, you want the depth to maybe half an inch. You just need it to be at least deep enough for the cut that you're going to be making. Make sure you set your start point at the lower left corner or what would be the home position. And we're going to click OK. So now I have a field of 24 inches by 24 inches. 
again, yours might be 12 by 7 or 1,000 millimeters by 1,500 millimeters. So all we need to do is draw a line, a continuous line of the grid all the way around the board. And the way I would do that is you grab your polyline tool. And the polyline is straight lines, meaning it'll cut, a, it'll draw a straight line every time you draw a new line, as opposed to like a curved line. So we're going to go into that. And in VCarve, you can see that my cursor is now changed. It's showing a little zigzag that's telling me that I am in the polyline mode or I'm going to be drawing a lot of straight lines. So the grid I'm going to be drawing is a two inches wide by two inches tall, and the grid is going to go all the way across and all the way up. I will do this in one continuous line. And the reason I do that is it eliminates all other movements of the machine. It Everything it does is just a cut. One of the things that that video did talk about was efficiency. That every time your machine has to pull out of a cut and move somewhere, that's time. And, and the more you have to do that, the longer your project is going to take. So since I'm going to do a 2x2, two two, I'm just going to start as my zero. Now, normally I would start it right down here at the corner of the material, but for your sake, I am going to draw it over in the gray area for uh, so you can see a couple of these lines that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. In VCarve, you want your snaps turned on. And the reason you want your snaps turned on is so it's much easier to draw a parallel lines, parallel to the axes the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, basically we're going to pick a point at the zero point, which is right down here, and I know my machine is 24 inches in the cut area. So I'm simply going to go up, and I because my snap is turned on, you see my line keeps snapping to a perpendicular vertical line. So that's what I want, and I'm just going to stay there. I'm going to type in 24 and enter. So now I have a 24 inch line. It started at the bottom. It's right at the top of the material. I'm going to come over and go 2. And I'm going to go down 24. And what I'm doing is every time I put in a new one, I just come down and let it snap on the line. I type in 2. 24. If you are using a different software, you may have to. Um, I'm not quite sure. I am working on learning the other freebies out there so I can give better guidance on them. Okay, so 2, enter. 24, enter. I'm going to speed up a little bit. I am now coming to the end of this one where this line is now. 24 wide, so I'm going to type in 24, and now if this were over top of this grid, the start point right here would be at this corner right here, and this corner right up here would have stopped right here. So what is going on now is I've designed a tool path that starts at this point and the machine will come down at from its home position and it, it'll start to cut like that back and forth and do this zigzag pattern all the way over to this point. So I have half of my grid. Now one of the things that you can do is you can start a new grid I don't, however. I'll just continue drawing my lines. So the tool path is, I just wanted to come across here now, all the way over to this corner. So I would type in 24, enter. Now what's going to happen is the tool is going to cross over all these previous cuts. I don't really care. It's just a grid line or a guideline, so it doesn't matter to me. So I'm going to come down to 
I'm going to go back 24. Now you're seeing some of the lines disappear. That's just simply because there's two lines on top of each other. And it's, it's, I know it's there. 24, 2, 24. And you're going to see that this is going to cut very clearly at the end. You just want to pay attention to what you're doing. By the way, when it comes to router bits, I have now sourced a great set, complete set of American-made uh, solid carbide router bits. So if you are one of those who's going, where can I find a complete set that's at a decent price, you can go to my website, idcwoodcraft.com. Or just go take a look down below in the description. They have actually in very high demand, and it's very hard to keep up with it. So I have created a priority list. Hopefully I've moved out of that list and have made them available. It's just supplies are very limited. And by the way, Doug, I shot this video after I got your email. And uh, I got out of bed to do a video, and it didn't work out, so I had to reshoot it. So you got me up, man. Okay, so you see I'm getting down to the bottom. And I'm almost at the end. I've just been typing in 2, 24. This one is 2. Enter. And then the last cut is 24. Enter. And then I'm going to escape. Now, if I go into Node, I'm going to just click this and type in Node. Well, first of all, let's just look at a couple things. You can see right here, there's a solid line as opposed to a purple dotted line. And that's because that's where the tool is crossing back over an existing line. I'm going to go into Node mode. I'm going to hit N. And what I'm going to see are a bunch of black nodes all over the place every at every corner. Except for right down here, I'm going to see one green node. So if I hit N, you see the green node down here with an arrow. So what that's telling me, that is the start point of the cut that this is going to make. So the tool, is the, tool the router bit, is going to come down and come into the, this position at the depth of the cut that I describe or tell it to do. And then it's going to start to move up. Remember how I drew this in the beginning? I went up all the way and then down and back and forth. And so it's going to keep going back and forth. And then it's going to come back and come all the way across, down, back across, down, back across. So now what I have to do is I need to move this onto the job so we can see it because my limits in the software are 24. So I'm going to use the move function by hitting M. And then I'm going to move, come down here. And I'm, when I come into here, you can see there's a little grid that pops up. Like a, My cursor changes from a plus to a little target. That means it's grabbing the corner. And I'm just going to grab that corner, and it's going to snap right there. So now we have our job in place. You may even want to draw it off on the side for your reference. So you can see all the lines, and then drag it over like that. So again, I just used the move command. I'm going to undo that and show you again. I have I hit M for move, or I could use the icon that would be over here, which is right under transform objects. It's the first button. It would do the same thing. So I'm going to type in move. Oops, I hit node. I'm going to type in M for move. I'm going to let it come over. It's going to snap on that corner. And it's just going to come in and snap in place. So now we are going to run this job. And I first just want to verify that I'm still on my lower left corner, which I am. I cancel. I'm going to go up to tool paths right here. And we're going to do a profile cut. So we click profile. The Start depth will be zero. We are set up on the top of our material. The depth of cut, we would normally make it 0.2 of an inch or a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. 
you just want a thin line. In this case, I'm going to set it to 2.2, so it's very clear. And the tool we want to use is a 30 degree V-bit. You can get away with a 60 degree V-bit. You just don't need to take out a lot of material. And by the way, my kit that I'm selling has a 30 in it. It's got a 60, a 90, and a quarter inch down cut, eighth inch down cut, a sixteenth inch up cut. And it's also got a quarter inch ball nose and a eighth inch ball nose. And you'll get some perks with it too as well. All right, so this is saying 0.2 right now. And it's telling me there's four passes. I'm just going to change that real quick to one pass. And I'm just going to generate this. It's going to pull in the tool data. When I selected the tool, it just pulled in all the feeds and speeds for that tool. I'm going to calculate. And it says no suitable vector selected. So I'm going to select the, that vector, calculate, and watch what happens. So now I've got my tool path all generated out. There's no red in here, which is a big deal. So then VCarve, the blue, indicates actual cutting operations. If you saw red, that's all rapid movements. And rapid movements are not cutting. That's when the tool has pulled out of the material. Let me rotate that around. It's when the tool is pulled out of the material and it has to wrap it to another position and then come back in and start cutting. So you can see I don't have a single rapid move in here. So this will be a very efficient program. I'm going to run this tool path and that's what it looks like. And there's your grid. Uh, one thing I just want to point out, I said before to make your cut depth like 0.2 you want to make it more like a 0 0.03 and the reason I just did that was I wanted to make sure it showed up for this design uh, tutorial so I'm changing the depth to 0 0.03 of an inch and I'm going to rerun it and you'll see exactly why I just showed you it in the way I did okay it's all run and you can't see any lines barely so for the sake of the video, now uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to run out to the router and we are going to run this out so you see exactly how this works. And don't forget, I have put this on Etsy so you don't even have to try to design it up. You can just run it and get your grid in there and start making amazing projects. The program is now loaded into the G-Code Sender and I have put my bit in. I zeroed it off the surface of the machine. And I want to make sure that while it's in the home position, I'm reading zero, zero. So I've sent it home. I've double checked this. I know that the Z is set. Program's in. All I have to do is turn the router on and hit go. So now you can see I've got a perfect grid line on my entire spoil board based on the maximum cut dimensions that this machine will do. Now one of the things with Bob's CNC is the front of the machine, the spoil board does not go all the way up to the full two inches. That's normal, that's okay, it doesn't bother me one bit. So this is MDF, all I have to do is a little bit of sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper very lightly and there it is now all I have to do is place my material down somewhere uh, know where I'm going to put it at uh, or tell the machine to go to as my zero point and I'm ready to run if you just want that program it's available on Etsy for the Evolution 4 and for the K77 series and remember it's a good idea to resurface your spoil board board first before you do this so if you have a Bob's Evolution E4, then I've got the program for that available on Etsy. That link is down below as well. I sell that thing for just a buck. Anyway, you've just gotten a whole lot of education on how to do this, the thought process, keeping it plain, simple, straightforward. Remember, only go like 0 0.03 of an inch. You're gonna use a 60 degree bit, You can or 30 degree bit. You can use a 60 degree bit if you don't have a 30. It's all going to come out the same. So, all right, I hope uh, you got something out of it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time.